Ridgeway's pipe had gone out. He broke off his account to stir up the tobacco in his bowl and relight it. When he had the briar burning well again, he seemed to be trying to recall where he'd left off in his story, but I wasn't fooled. Chance Ridgeway may have been pushing sixty, but there was nothing wrong with his memory. I figured he was testing me. He looked confused. He scratched his head. Let's see now, he said. Where was I? Until just lately. Oh, yes. Well, sir, Medicine Lodge fancies itself a real up-to-date town. It has a bank, a mayor, a town council, and everything. The council hired an old-time lawman named of Dan Wingate as city marshal. Dan was nearly eighty years old and half-blind, but he'd been a good officer in his younger days. Like I said, the reservation was fairly peaceable at the time, and nobody saw much need for a town tamer, or the money they'd have to pay one. They gave old Dan a stipend and a warm place by the stove, and he took on the job of keeping the peace. Then about a month ago, things changed. A young renegade name of Archie Youngbull embarked on a career of outlawry and general mischief in and around Medicine Lodge. Archie heads up a gang of ne'er-do-wells like himself, and they began to accost citizens, break into houses and stores, and steal pretty much whatever they could lay their hands on. Old Dan tried to arrest them, but Archie's boys jumped him in an alley and nearly beat him to death. Broke his nose and his jaw and fractured three of his ribs. One of the ribs punctured his lung. Doc Westby of Medicine Lodge worked most of the night to save his life. What happened to Archie and his gang? Nothing. After seeing what befell their marshal, none of the town's upstanding citizens wanted to be next. Archie took Dan's gun and badge and set the marshal's office ablaze. The building is made of stone, so it didn't burn, but the fire made quite a mess of the interior. For a moment, Ridgway was silent. He seemed lost in thought as he looked off into the distance. At length, he turned back to me. One of the councilmen said he'd heard about a deputy from down in Cheyenne, a former soldier named of Jefferson Brown, who was looking for work. The town council still didn't want to pay much, but the beating of old Dan and the fire spooked them. The city fathers held a powwow, put a little more money in the pot, and sent Brown a telegram. Jeff accepted their offer. He rode north and took over a month ago as Marshal of Medicine Lodge. Ridgeway's pipe had gone cold again. This time he tapped the ashes out in the palm of his hand, dumped them into the wastebasket, and put the briar in his pocket. When next he spoke, his voice had a determined ring to it. 